can introduce and say farewell to Wade. So I've I, I known Wade for too short of a time. It, and so when I, I met him, um, it was kind of, hey, you want to do something? And I was like, oh, okay. And then I, after I got to meet him, I, I was amazed by his diligence and just his raw talent at tinkering and thinking outside the box and, and to make his ideals into reality. And so I was very impressed from the get-go, and, and, I, and I thought to myself, well, if I only had another year or, or, or some more time, I, how much more things we could do. So with, uh, with great pleasure, just wait. <laughs> As uh, Dr. Falls says, I'm Wade Jaskula. I've been working with Dr. Falls over the semester. Um, we can actually take 114 together, so that was, that was a great counts. experience. It doesn't count. <laughs> so we've known each other for a while, we just haven't seen each other. Um, so uh, the project I'm working on is uh, infrared detection in biological tissue. So the inspiration for this project was uh, based on guide catheters. So um, Dr. Falls and I talked about um, uh, a pro or kind of an idea that somebody came to him for. And currently, doctors are using guide catheters to insert uh, stents into the human body um, through, um, through blood vessels or uh, bile ducts or um, urinary tracts, things like that. Um, so they use a process called fluoroscopy. And fluoroscopy is a process where um, a patient would actually uh, swallow a, a liquid dye and it would fluoresce under x-ray um, x-ray light. And so they use a continuous x-ray imaging machine, as you can see in that picture there. Um, and the patient would actually lie on the table, and the scanner would basically scan the body, and it would actually guide the doctor to use their, um, to use their catheter to place a stent appropriately. It's very effective. Um, however, it's expensive. Uh, these are in the order of hundreds of thousands of dollars for the machine. And it also carries a risk of excess radiation during the procedure because you do have x-ray that you're um, getting uh, absorbed into the body to, to provide this, this procedure. And um, they've done a lot to mitigate a lot of that risk, but the risk is still there. So, you know, is there an alternative method to use perhaps infrared uh, light to do kind of the same thing? So this is just kind of a, you know, using infrared light, you have, uh, you know, lower energy, um, and it's non-ionizing radiation. Um, ionizing radiation is basically where um, the electrons get broken apart from the atoms. And that's what, um, that's what x-rays as high energy can actually cause. And so going with um, infrared light um, would uh, eliminate that as, a, as an issue. So this is just a uh, near-infrared spectrum um, showing in the middle. This is actually the entire um, electromagnetic band. Uh, you can see on the, on the far left there, gamma rays and x-rays. And then as you uh, travel further uh, to the right, you'll see uh, visible light, which everybody can see. Um, and then just to the right of red, you'll see infrared light. And so I'm actually going to be operating in the short wave range, which is between about 750 nanometers to uh, 15 to 2,500 nanometers. Um, and I'm trying to think of what I want to say now. So, um, yeah, so basically near infrared is uh, closest to the red uh, wavelengths and visible light. So a lot of people have probably done this before where they've taken a flashlight and shined it on their hand and, and um, everybody can kind of relate to this. And um, I don't know if anybody's wondered, you know, why is it that I only see red? Um, white light actually carries all the visible colors uh, between blue and red. And for some reason, red is actually what's being transmitted only. Um, as you can see in the pictures below, uh, you can see the blue and green actually don't transmit at all. They either reflect or get absorbed into the body in this tissue. Um, but red, red light there actually gets transmitted through. So the reason why that is so is because of something called the optical window. And the optical window is a range of uh, wavelengths that are between about 600 nanometers and 1400 nanometers. And this is the range of infrared uh, light that has the maximum penetration uh, depth in tissue. And so as you can see, 600 to 650 is red, visible red. And as you can see, um, you know, these various uh, materials that are in your tissue, water, hemoglobin, and melanin, um, actually have a fairly low absorption, uh, absorption rate in that, uh, that wavelength band. 
Outside of that window, um, they actually have a fairly high absorbance. So with that low absorbance comes a fairly high uh, transmission. And that's probably, that's why you see the red shining through uh, your skin. And so water is made, you know, 70% 70 70 of your body is water. Um, hemoglobin, deoxyhemoglobin are um, proteins in uh, blood, uh, your red blood cells, and then melanin makes up the pigment, uh, the color of your skin. <clears throat> so, um, just to kind of begin, we just started from scratch, and um, I wanted to first see if this even works. Um, so I started with an initial circuit. Um, as you can see on the left, there's two LEDs there. Uh, one's kind of a, a dark color, and one's a light color LED. The dark one would be the emitter, and then the light colored one is the uh, the uh, photodiode or the receiver or the detector. And then over here I have a visible light indicator. Um, and so what I, what I did was I developed this circuit to see if I could see the uh, infrared light. So if I didn't have the emitter turned on, I would read whatever was coming in through the room uh, radiation through that um, detector. And it's set at a fairly low uh, voltage value. And light uh, being received by the uh, photodiode is going to be represented by voltage. And so, um, so I start out with, with no light coming in, and the room ambience picked up a, a baseline voltage. And when I actually shine the infrared emitter towards the uh, detector, I'm actually able to see a high voltage. So what I did was I set a reference voltage um, somewhere just above the uh, room ambient, and uh, this visible light, com or visible LED comes in. If, if I uh, do not um, reach this threshold, this light will not turn on. But as soon as I actually see that, that um, infrared light come and be uh, received by the detector, it'll actually uh, exceed that threshold and this light will turn on. So it's a really quick way for me to see on and off, you know, does this work, does this not? So that's, that's a very interesting test. So the next thing I did was, um, I, I needed something that I can actually uh, test tissue, uh, some sort of tissue. So I decided bacon, you know, everybody would think bacon would be the first choice. So I thought bacon would be good. Um, the reason why I chose bacon is because it has a similar density to human tissue. But in addition to that, it has a fairly consistent thickness across, um, across the material. And so the idea is behind this is I can actually stack and layer those on top of each other. And the, the idea behind this is basically to see what the penetration depth of that light is. So uh, the figure to the left is having this emitter and a, the photodiode detector, and they're shining directly on this bacon piece, this material tissue. And um, I'm actually looking to see what's actually being received in a voltage received by that detector as a reflection off the, off the bacon. So anytime you shine light onto an object, it's either going to uh, reflect transmit or be absorbed by the material. What's, what's, um, what, what I'm really actually looking for is how much light is actually being transmitted through the bacon. Because I want to be able to detect something behind it. If we're going to use uh, guide catheters and be able to use infrared for this, I want to be able to see something in the skin. Um, and so the, the figure on the, on the right is basically adding a metal plate behind this tissue and uh, seeing how much light or voltage I'm able to um, see as it's reflected off the metal through the bacon back to the receiver. So my results are that um, as I start here, uh, this is basically no bacon, no, no, no material, no tissue, and I, I shine the light in, in room, uh, the room radiation gives me about 280 millivolts. And if I put a reflector, like a piece of metal on it, I'm gonna maximize my voltage, so I, I get about five volts. But as I increase the number of slices of this tissue, um, you can see that I immediately get a higher reflection uh, from the bacon at uh, 1.15 volts. Um, but I still actually see the metal behind it, uh, which is a little bit higher at 1.8. So my difference is uh, 630 millivolts. And what that gives me is the, it tells me that I'm actually able to see something behind it. So as you can increase the number of bacon slices, you can see that that bottom, that bottom row there, the difference, actually drops off significantly, and you can see that by the blue, the blue line in the graph. So what this tells me is I can only see maybe two slices thick, um, which equates to about four millimeters of penetration depth. It's, it's between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch. Um, it's 
perhaps just below the surface of the skin. Um, but but it, it does prove that you know this works. So the next thing I did was I decided, uh, so the first thing I did was I used a, a standard emitter and detector that I can get from Radio Shack. And um, it had a certain wavelength, 850 nanometers, and a certain beam angle on it, which is the angle of, um, of uh, uh, emittance of the light. And so what I wanted to do was actually see, okay, what, what other LEDs are out there that have maybe a narrower beam angle, um, different wavelength, um, and, and see what the response is from each one of those. Um, so I, I uh, modeled, I did a 3D model of uh, a little wand, and it's how it basically captures this circular, uh, um, circular piece that'll hold eight emitters around the outside, and the photodiode will sit in the middle. I also um, designed a circuit which uses a microcontroller and it's used to actually drive the emitters, uh, turn them on and off, and then also uh, sense that voltage coming in as it's receiving the light from that photodiode. Um, then, I, then I built it. Uh, the prototype cost about $30 in parts. Um, and it turned into a, a portable near-infrared detector. So, um, and it carries a, a range of wavelengths between 810 and 950 nanometers. And these were the least costly uh, LEDs that I could find, uh, that I could work with. And, um, but it also had different beam angles. So it was kind of interesting to find out, you know, can I get better penetration depth than what I saw initially in my, in my uh, first test. The other thing is being portable like this, you can test it on anything. So you can, uh, it could be a stud finder, it could be, um, something that maybe measures the, the fat in your body or something like that. Uh, so then I, um, then I wrote uh, a Python script. Python is a programming language. Um, and I wrote this program to basically do some real life plotting. So what this will do is as this, is, um, as this runs, um, this is kind of a still picture of, of that plot uh, continuing to run. And so what it's doing is it's picking up, as these get turned on and off, they get turned on and off every tenth of a second. And so as I scan this, I can actually see what, um, what voltage I'm getting received by each one of those uh, wavelengths. And so it gives me a really quick response if I'm able to find something, you know, it, it could spike, and if not, you know, it, it, it'll stay flat. And what I did was I, I actually used this as the, the square of the voltage so that I can actually squelch any of the low voltage values and, and enhance the, the higher voltage values. So what I did here is um, I went back to my bacon, because everybody likes bacon, and I decided to uh, use this wand uh, to, to um, scan this piece of bacon. But what I did was I put a, a little disc of metal underneath it. And I want to see if I can see it. And so as I scanned over this, you can see that on the, on the left-hand side and the, and the right-hand side, this is actually the reflection voltage coming from the photodiode uh, through the bacon slice. So it's actually being reflected off and coming back. So, you, so you know, normally it would be you know, somewhere down in here, very low voltage, and just be picking up room, room ambient and um, room radiation. But uh, with the bacon, you know, you're seeing some voltage here. But right in here, this is where I actually found the, the little metal strip. So you can tell that it, it works pretty well. Uh, here's another quick, uh, quick test that we did. Uh, we hooked up an oscilloscope just to kind of get an idea of what, you know, how this works. It's kind of another method. Um, so on the right-hand side, this is basically just the room ambient. Once again, it's voltage from, from individual emitters. And then as we kind of scanned our hands, uh, actually it was Dr. Paul's hands, um, <laughs> You know, we're actually able to see uh, the varying voltage levels from this. It's possible that it's picking up the skin, but as we scan the, um, the, our arm or you know, our forehead or something like that, we're getting different voltage readings. So it's, it's really going below the skin. There's actually, it's picking up something else. So in conclusion, um, basically it's been proven possible by experimentation that you can actually use infrared light to um, detect objects in biological tissue. Uh, future testing would be to uh, perhaps use uh, laser diodes. Laser diodes have a very high focus um, beam angle, and, and you can also increase the power a little bit. And by doing that, you can get a light, larger light penetration depth 
and perhaps see things a little deeper in the tissue. Um, in addition, uh, this optical window is fairly large, um, and so perhaps we can use longer wavelengths, a little more expensive uh, components, but use long, longer wavelengths um, to actually see if the transmission through the tissue is better there. And then also experiment with real world applications. So, you know, let's say, you know, somebody has a, a screw in their, in their arm or their leg or something like that, and you're able to actually use a wand like this or something similar uh, to be able to scan that. And that would actually give us a better indication, indication of how this works with, um, with real human tissue. Um, just want to thank Dr. Pauls for, um, for the opportunity to work on this project. It, it's very intriguing. Um, I wish I could work on it more. Uh, I hope somebody can kind of take this on in the same form or, or better or, or different. Uh, thank my family for, for being here and, and thank you all for listening.